Hello and welcome to this fifth tutorial in the Space Bubbles project. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create the object level controller which will be responsible for randomly generating the bubbles at the top of the screen and allowing them to stream down at different speeds and in different directions. And it will then start to make a game of our project. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is move over to the right hand side to the objects again and right click and select create object. We are going to call this object obj underscore level controller and press enter. So like previously this object is not going to have a sprite, it's not going to be visible, it's going to be in the room but just invisible and controlling how the bubbles generate for us. Okay, so the first event we're going to add is the, a create event. So I'm going to click add event create. So when the object level is created, we are going to set up a couple of alarms that are essentially going to be used to control how the bubbles come in. So we need to come across and we're going to search for the alarm block. There it is, drag it in. And there are a variety of different alarms that we can choose from. We can choose up to 12 different alarms to trigger in our code. We're going to start our alarm zero and I'm going to set it to 60. Now alarms work on the same principle as the frames per second in the game. So we use 60 frames per second um, in this project. So that means that 60 ticks um, will be one second. So this alarm will, will trigger after one second of um, the object being created. Okay, so if I wanted it to trigger two seconds after the object being created, I would set it to 120. And if I wanted to set it to three seconds after it's been created, I would set it to 180 because there's 60 ticks in every second of the game. So after one second, we are going to uh, trigger alarm zero. Okay, we're also going to trigger a second alarm because we're going to have an alarm for each of the bubble types we currently have. So we have two bubble types, so we're going to trigger two different alarms. I'm going to change this one to alarm one, and this one is going to trigger after three seconds. Okay, so it's going to be a slight delay. So I'm going to put that one to 180. So alarm zero is going to fire after one second, and alarm sorry, alarm zero is going to activate after one second. Alarm one is going to activate after three seconds. Close that down. Now we're going to add in the events for when these alarm trigger or when they sound. So alarm zero. So add event alarm zero. So this event will trigger when alarm zero has been reached. Okay, so after one second, this alarm event will fire. And what we're going to do is drag in a create instant box because we're going to create a bubble. So drag that in. Click on the drop down and select OBJ bubble one. So after one second, we are going to create a bubble, OBJ, OBJ bubble one. And we're going to create it at these coordinates here. So we want to create it at the top of the screen. So let's remind ourselves again of the coordinates system that we're going to use in Game Maker. So remember, we have a width of 800 pixels and a room height of 960. So Anywhere along here, we're going to generate the bubble. Okay, so if we then go, there's our bubble going to generate. It's going to create itself just above the room so we can't see it. So it's going to generate between 0 and 800 pixels on the x axis, and we're going to generate it at minus 32 on the y axis. So that will be just outside the room. Okay, so because we don't want to set the same starting position every time, we're going to use a function, a random function. Okay, so it's called I random underscore range, open brackets, make sure we spell random correctly. I random underscore range, and we're going to set two values at which it's going to generate a random number between. So I'm going to say between 16 and the room width. So room width is however wide the room is and we've already said just previously our room is 800 pixels wide so it's going to generate a random number between 16 and the room width of 800 but I'm actually going to take 16 off that because I don't want it generating right on the side of the room so I'm going to bring that in by 16 pixels. So it's going to generate between 16 and 800 minus 16 which is 784. 
Okay, so each time it creates instance, it will generate it randomly between those two numbers, which means that we will get different start positions for the bubble along the x-axis, which is good. Um, y, we're just simply going to say minus 32, so it's going to go off the back of the room, off the top of the room, by 32 pixels, so we won't be able to see it generating, which is good. Once it's generated, we're then going to start the alarm again, because we want to continue to create these bubbles. So it's going to create an instance and then it's going to set the alarm zero and again we're going to be clever here because we don't want it to come in every two seconds, that would be a bit predictable. So again we're going to get a bit of an element of randomness in here. So we're going to set the alarm count down to a random number and it's going to be I random range and it's going to be between every, uh, let's, what should we say, every second, so 60 and 180. So between one and three seconds it will continue to generate, it will create another bubble. And then when it creates another bubble, it will then activate the alarm again and set it between one and three seconds. So we can guarantee that there will be a OBJ bubble one created every one to three seconds in the game. Okay, so let's close that. Right, let's go back and now create alarm one. That's the second alarm we set up. And in fact, I'm gonna open alarm zero and I'm gonna show you how we can quickly copy these. So select the top bar hold control click on the second title bar and then right click and select copy and then open alarm one event right click and select paste okay use the middle mouse button to drag it back into view if you need to so it's copied it all across so we just changed some of these properties now so we're not going to create obj bubble one we're going to create obj bubble two when this alarm triggers we are going to randomly create it between 16 and minus 100 uh, minus, uh, sorry between 16 and 784 and we're going to still create it at the minus 32 as well remember to change the alarm this time we're going to reset alarm one and this time we're going to reset it between 120 so two every two seconds to every six so it's between two and six seconds we will spawn in bubble two okay so again we've got them spawning in at different times so that is essentially done now let's add that to the room so close this object down open up our room drag in the controller and you can see it's just coming in as a question mark we usually put controllers in the top left of the room it doesn't have a sprite so it just comes in as a question mark which means it will be invisible but it is in the room and working so let's delete out these bubble objects so just click on them and select press the delete key which is above the arrows on your keyboard then hit the play button so what we should find now is the level controller is automatically creating these bubble instances for us and it's doing it with an element of randomness as well so there's the first one there we go so we should see more of the white bubbles than we do with the yellow but we should see that the yellow continue to be faster bubbles okay if you're not happy with how quickly they're creating the bubbles you want them to slow down or speed them up you can just alter the numbers Okay, so if we came back into our level controller and open that up, and we say, well, actually, on alarm zero, so we want alarm zero, which is the white bubbles, we want them to be creating quicker, we might say, right, we're going to take this down to one, so this is pretty much straight away, and then we're going to set that to 100, and, or we're going to set that to 60, so this literally, we can guarantee one every second, if not sooner. So if we now run that, these white bubbles should be coming in very quickly and very often. Or very often, should we say, same speed, but a lot more frequently. There we go. So you can set the values to whatever you want. Remember, you are going to be layering up lots of different bubble types into the game. So you do need to remember that not all of the white bubbles are going to be providing the challenge. You're going to have maybe five, six, seven, eight different types of bubbles that the player will have to contend with. So you may want to just reduce that back down to 60 and 180. Okay, now currently at the minute, when the player, the player 
collides with the bubbles nothing happens so and also when the bubbles collide with the gamma ray nothing happens so let's quickly rectify that so we're going to come up to the OBJ player and we are going to add a new event it's going to be a collision event and it's going to be a collision with OBJ bubble not one and two OBJ bubble because bubble was the parent event so this means that when it collides with any of the bubbles it will run these actions okay so this is another good thing about parent and child relationships we can just say well if we interact with the parent object we're going to be interacting with the child objects as well okay so when the player collides with the bubble we're going to bring in a destroy block so I've just started to search for the word destroy and then bring it in and then I'm going to bring it in again so what that's going to do is the first one is going to destroy, destroy the player object and then destroy instance we're going to click on the on the second one and click on the down arrow and we want to destroy the other object in the collision so sorry that was a bit quick let's show you again so we want to select other okay so we've got two destroy instance instructions one that's going to destroy the player so we click on that it says self so it will destroy us as the player but it will also destroy the other object in the collision because obviously you need two objects to be a collision so it's going to destroy ourself and whatever that other object is and in this case it would be obj bubble okay so we close that down and then we're going to open up obj bubble and we're going to add a new event which will then be inherited by the children objects and this is going to be collision with object gamma ray okay so I'm going to bring in the two destroy objects so then in my recent use categories I'm going to bring two destroy instances in first one again we're going to leave the same so it's going to destroy the bubble itself and then click on the down arrow next to the second one and select other so that's going to destroy the other object in the collision which will be the gamma ray object okay so close that and if we run that now we should now have the gamma ray that's it destroying the bubbles and there you go so when it hits the player it destroys the player object as well